Hello, my name is Simon Su. I'm a senior lecturer here in the Visual Studies program at the Faculty of Creative Arts, University of Malaya. This is the first video in a series of three videos that we are creating to provide you with more information on postgraduate studies here that we are offering. In this video, we will be providing you with an introduction to visual studies as a field of studies. We will also explore what research means in an academic university and how you can go about doing visual studies research here with us. Hopefully, this will help you to decide whether or not you would like to embark on this learning journey. Our second video will focus specifically on our master's program, while the third will look at the PhD program. In addition, each of our lecturers will also be creating their own short video profiles where you get to learn about their research interests and teaching philosophy. Links to the video profiles will be listed in the information panel of this video below. So let's start with the basic question. What exactly is visual studies? As an art historian, I often describe what I do as a form of object-based or image-centered cultural history. The things we study as artworks or visual objects often reflect or shape the beliefs and values of the society who may commission and use them. Our research program here plays equal emphasis on the importance of cultivating historical and visual literacy skill sets. This means that we believe that learning how to analyze the formal qualities of an artwork or object is equally important as learning how to explain the context from which an artwork or object emerges from. We recognize these skills as foundational to the course of study. In the long run, they contribute to our students' ability to successfully articulate their ideas and communicate their research insights in the research thesis they are required to write. So here in the Visual Studies program, we like to think of research along two tracks. The first track is more firmly rooted in the academic convention of the humanities. As a field of study, the candidate embarks on investigating a topic related to art history, visual studies, architecture, film studies, or cultural history. At the end of their exploration, they're required to produce a written document that contains their research findings, as well as reflect on their research process. Increasingly, Segments of the academic world have also been looking at expanding what we accept as research in the academic context. Being part of the Faculty of Creative Arts, our program is aware that to be truly creative, we need to create a space that encourages us, and this includes students, to reflect also on other forms of research. Candidates interested to explore this can embark on our second track, which we call practice-led research. Similar to our first track, candidates pursuing practice-led research will be investigating on a research topic as part of their learning journey. However, in track two, the investigation takes the form of realizing a creative project or practice. The difference here is important. Uh, being that the candidate's practice and project becomes a central method to the investigation. In the end, the candidate is still required to produce a written thesis, and the strength of the research is ultimately evaluated based on the written thesis itself. In this regard, we're slightly different from an art school. Uh, do note that the term that we have adopted here is practice-led rather than practice-based. In, this is because unlike in art school, the focus uh, that focuses perhaps on evaluating the creative output itself, what we do here is to cater to practitioners who want to uh, write and recognizes value in the process of writing as a form of thinking through and reflecting on one's research practice. Uh, writing uh, as a sustained mode of inquiry through which we could step back from the making and engage with a broader field of scholarship in order to better understand how one's creative practice and ideas can be situated within a larger intellectual conversation. And this is the goal of emphasizing on writing. After all, 
a well-written thesis not only challenges our assumptions about a given subject, it also shows us complex new ways of understanding the topic. Finally, I'd like to point out that what we count as a practice really extends beyond the making of the creative artwork. A practice or a project here also encompasses uh, interest in developing a curatorial project, a heritage or an archival project, and even a digital humanities project. So you might ask, what might count as a suitable topic in the visual studies then? Uh, so from this move board that I put together, you probably have an idea how vast the field is and how generous it can be. In simple terms, anything that has a visual dimension worth thinking about uh, is something that we can explore through visual studies. And this includes architecture, religious ritual, landscape studies, performance, video, film, digital cultures, design, decorative arts, photography, etc. The key word here is worth thinking about. After all, what we try to emphasize is learning the skills to evaluate and make, argue, make the argument about the importance of one's research topic. Uh, these are indication of a student's ability to master important critical thinking and communication skills that we hope will be transferable into different contexts as well as line of work. In this sense, visual studies is really uh, a, a field that is located at an interdisciplinary crossroad since it is in constant conversation with other areas of studies, including religion, literature, politics, geography, anthropology, architecture, philosophy, performance, film and television, and even the physical and applied sciences. Uh, we generally have three programs on offer. So for students without an undergraduate degree in art history or related studies in the humanities, our mixed mode program is a combination of courses where students are taught the skills to undertake humanities research, leading to the writing of a research thesis on a topic that is of interest to the student. For those with an undergraduate background in art history or related humanities uh, training, uh, or those with demonstrable research experience, you might uh, be interested to enroll in our full research master's program. Uh, however, please note that those with a fine arts undergraduate degree are generally not considered as uh, having the necessary foundational humanities research, reading and writing skills that students are required to have to undertake research at this level. Therefore, we, we often recommend fine art graduates to take on our mixed mode uh, program. Uh, so finally, I... Uh, with, uh, our, we also have a PhD program focusing on uh, building capacity to undertake original research in the field of visual studies. Again, I would like to uh, emphasize that more details about both our master's program and our PhD programs can be found in the second and third video of this series. So as you're probably considering applying at this stage, it is a good time to pause for a moment and ask yourself first and foremost, is graduate school really a good fit for you? Um, so what does it take to come into graduate school? I think uh, first of all, you need a burning interest to undertake a research project. And you also need to have an inquiry mind and show broad-mindedness. This means that Sometimes you, you must be willing to challenge your own personal assumption about the way the world works. And this is realized principally through reading widely and broadly about a research topic. Uh, therefore, you need to have a love for reading. Um, finally, uh, it also helps if you have good experience with undergraduate research project. Uh, qualities of an ideal graduate students that we find generally are that they are persevering, they are intellectually curious, and they are creative. They know how to problem solve or work their way around an intellectual issue. Uh, they, 
very often the ideal graduate students should also be self-disciplined and self-motivated. You need to have good time management skills as a result. Uh, last but not least, uh, it's important not to be easily intimidated by the many obstacles and challenges that is ahead of you. Uh, this means that you need to have the capacity for delayed gratification. Reward comes at the end of a long drawn out journey of writing, thinking, and researching. Uh, it doesn't come immediately. Uh, okay, so um, uh, hopefully this hasn't sort of scared you uh, from thinking about joining our program. Uh, and if you are still considering before you apply, uh, do have some of these things in mind. Uh, perhaps you might want to have an idea of what topic you might be interested to research on. Uh, this could change later on, or it could be, it could be narrowed down, uh, but it's important to already start thinking about uh, what you're interested to pursue as a research project, because ultimately uh, this will orientate you towards and this will provide you with a research goal uh, to reach out towards. Uh, so it's also important to at least have a basic understanding of your topic. So don't wait until uh, uh, you're given the green light to begin your uh, uh, thesis that you only start doing the basic research. Uh, you should already read up on some of the main or relevant literature connected to your topic right at the very beginning. Uh, and it also helps to brush up on basic research skills, uh, including uh, signing up on the, num the many different free online courses in art history or related humanities subject. Uh, they are currently available online. Doing some brush up on basic research skills goes a long way in helping you prepare for what is to come in class, if possible you might also want to consider learning another language, especially a language that is connected to your research topic. After all, a language is a window into another cultural universe. It will make your project so much richer. And very often, a lot of sources uh, in uh, cultural specific uh, topics are not available or not translated into the English language or any of the major languages in the world. Therefore, learning another language is crucial to ensuring that your thesis is rich and, uh, and, 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 and it's rich in its content. So um, when you are thinking about, uh, you know, applying to a program, you're also probably uh, wondering what are the job prospects uh, for someone with a degree in visual studies. Now, we have graduates working in the creative industry, uh, research institutes, uh, governmental agencies, as well as education sector. Now, we recognize that each profession often requires very specific skill sets and that jobs in the cultural sector are often competitive and hard to come by. So with this in mind, what we try to do is to advise our students uh, based on what are their learning and career goals. So a paper qualification may open up new opportunities and career possibilities, but chances are it's not a guarantee for a job. So what we try to do is to advise students to acquire additional skills through volunteership, internship, attending workshops, uh, lectures, seminars outside of their course of study, even learning new languages and undertake strategic forms of networking. Principally, the value of our program is in cultivating transferable skill sets in critical thinking, imaginative problem solving, and a lifelong thirst in curiosity-driven learning. And these are all hallmarks of doing research in the arts and humanities, and we hope that by equipping you with these essential transferable skill sets, you are more prepared to uh, face the world and embrace uh, the lessons that you learn through your uh, research uh, experience here with us and take it into even other fields of study. So on most days, however, 
uh, in today's in, uh, in today's uh, and in, in in today's sort of like uh, sit in the situation that we're in today. On most days, for more than a year now, my day really begins and ends in front of the computer screen, sharing the same virtual space with either students or colleagues from places near or far. The COVID-19 global pandemic has challenged the way we engage with students. Here, we are aware of the challenges that students are facing, and we're keenly aware that this is a difficult period for many people. In response, our program is constantly innovating and exploring better ways to foster a much more meaningful virtual learning environment. In addition, uh, having, in addition to having virtual meetings, uh, the modules we run are also designed in a way to accommodate for asynchronous learning so that we can better accommodate the schedules of different students while also ensuring that students have the opportunity to learn through live engagement and discussion. If what I've suggested to you and described so far about our program is exactly what you've been thinking of pursuing, you can start figuring out the application process by visiting apply.um.edu.my. However, I would like to suggest for you to watch the remaining videos in this series of three videos, since they will provide you with more detailed information about our master's and PhD programs. Last but not least, please follow us on our Facebook page, where we will be posting details on our next virtual open day. This is a one and a half hour program where our lecturers will be presenting, will be present to answer any further questions you might have about our program. Our Facebook page is Visual Studies Program, uh, University of Malaya. Uh, so otherwise, feel free to send your inquiries over to me at simonsoon at um.edu.my. We hope the video has inspired you to consider joining our program and begin uh, this exciting and transformational learning journey uh, together with us. Thank you for watching our video.